Okay, this is video three. Uh, I was trying to squish all this in the 10 minutes, but uh, as you can see, I'm on video three, but I think getting some good information out. Uh, when video, oh, this is video four, excuse me. Uh, when video three ended, um, I was trying to remember the name of the king of Troy uh, during the period of the Trojan War. Not trying to get off into any Greek mythology, but just trying to explain which, you know, that's been documented as being an actual occurrence. Uh, but, you know, in modern times, because of the movement of people, people totally don't understand who was involved with that, that, that war. So, uh, Pyrrhum, Pyrrhum is the name I was trying to think of, uh, the father of Hector in Paris. And, um, uh, he was uh, supposed to be the the um, father-in-law or the um, uncle of the uh, a figure known as Memnon, not Agamemnon, but Memnon. And um, you can do research on him, and he's mentioned in. Um, in the series of books of the Odyssey, but a much less lesser character. Uh, he was supposed to have been killed by Achilles. Now, as I mentioned before, the Hittites occupied that area of Turkey. Now, I'm, you know, I'm not sure I've seen maps where Troy was included. Troy was not included. But um, with if you look at the map with the Hittites being all around, you got to think that the Hittites, if they weren't directly involved, they had they had uh, some level of um, you know involvement in what's going on with Troy. Um, so um, in the Odyssey, Memnon is documented as being Ethiopian. Now. Um, Now the Greeks called everybody that was dark skin Ethiopian. They just kind of lumped everybody together. And if you read history, you'll you'll see that. Um, so it's unclear as to whether he was really supposed to be Ethiopian or what you know what he was supposed to be. Now now, if you look read on Memnon, he was supposed to be the father of Thor who was the original king of the Germanic tribes. Uh, so Thor being, you know, a Viking king or Germanic god, if you will. And again, a lot of this mythology, mythology is based on actual people. Now I'm not trying to get into any theory, but so you've got an Ethiopian person who's the father of Thor, who's, the progenitor, if you will, of the Germanic tribe. So, uh, you, as you can see, and that's why when Alexander finally made his way to Egypt and saw these huge statues, you know, he said that those were statues of Memnon. So, as you can see, Egypt somehow had tie-ins with Troy, uh, and that was apparently known at that time. Uh, so, and... Uh, now, I don't think those were statues of Memnon, but that's what he deemed them because he knew that there was some type of tie-in with Troy and Egypt. So, so there's a lot of misunderstanding and, and things in history, and I just wanted to use that as an example. So, um, okay, so... When you get to about 1100 BC, that's when you get to the time of David and Solomon. And, and David, at the point of putting everybody in subjection through war, um, he um, built or put together or, or you know, uh, brought about this Phoenician term that you'll you'll see a lot of as you do research so the phoenician empire okay so um 
Now, history will tell you these were, you know, African, an African empire, okay, uh, with, with their base being Tyre and Zidane. Now, Tyre and Zidane would have been, you know, at that time, places somewhat controlled by the Israelites. And so uh, these people were great sailors, but, you know, as you read through Kings, um, you know, you could see that David and Solomon use these ships um, developed by these people to uh, go and get supplies to build the temple um, and for other things, right? And, you know, there's a term in there that said it took three years for them to sell to this land and get supplies and sell back, okay? So, uh, so that Phoenician Empire really you know, when you really look at it in history, it was really an Israelite empire. Uh, and there were, you know, if you do research on it, and, you know, there were branches of this empire uh, that spanned from Israel, uh, ancient Carthage, to to, to Spain. Florida, to Great Britain where the Celts were, to France where the Gauls were, Spain, Italy, Iberia. So it, you know, over time, you know, there's, I guess, more areas involved. I'm not saying that all those areas were involved initially, but just over time, those are, you know, a lot of the areas that were involved. So um, so you got to understand that when you see that term Phoenician, uh, particularly when you go way back, you know, it, it's talking about Israelites and, and even when you go forward, it's, it's still talking about Israelites up until a certain period of time. Now the Africans were involved, um, but, uh, it was, it was an Israelite program, so to speak. Uh, so. Um, the most important thing you got to understand from history when you're trying to understand the Bible is the split in the Israelite kingdom after the death of Solomon because Solomon uh, upset the Most High God and worshipped other gods in his latter years um, the kingdom was split into two pieces. And so you had um, the northern kingdom, which consisted of 10 tribes. And you had the southern kingdom, which consisted of two tribes, as well as most of the Levitical priests. And the southern kingdom was called the kingdom of Judah, and the northern kingdom was called the, the kingdom of Israel. And you must understand that because, you know, when you get past, um, you know, the Chronicles, things of that nature, if you don't understand that piece, you're going to be totally lost. Uh, so these were operating as two separate kingdoms with separate kings. And around 700 BC, the Northern Kingdom went into captivity of the Assyrians. So the Assyrians came through and pretty much broke up that whole northern kingdom, right? Uh, some of the northern kingdom scattered to other lands, fleeing for their lives. Some of the, some of the northern kingdom went into captivity under the Israelites. Excuse me, not uh, under the Assyrians, excuse me. And... Um, if you read the history on it, and, and, and this is what, um, if you know the story, uh, when, 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 when the Northern Kingdom moved out of the land through captivity and, um, 
and just fleeing for their lives, the kingdom of Syria allowed Canaanites, Africans, to move into that northern Israel area, the land of Samaria. And that is why uh, that story with uh, Yahweh Shai or Jesus talking to the woman at the well, you know, he was talking to her and, and somewhat indirectly, you know, explaining to her that basically she didn't belong there and her people weren't going to be there in the future worshiping. And so that's, um, you know, she, again, people trying to claim nationality for moving into a land. She tried to state claim on her father, Israel or whatever. And she was like, no, you know, um, you know, um, you know, you, you don't know what you're worshiping, what you're talking about. You know, you're not going to be here in the future. So that's what that was all about. And that's also why uh, Jesus, the real name Yahweh Shai, told the disciples not to go to Samaria. You know, and he told them don't go to Samaria because there's pretty much Africans living in Samaria, not Israelites. Okay. So, um, and the scattered of the top 10 tribes are the people who were Hellenists and look up the term Hellenists because they moved to other lands that eventually got conquered by the Greeks and they started taking on Greek customs. And that's what, um, that's what is being talked about in most of the time in the New Testament when it talks about Gentiles. It's talking about Hellenists, people who were scattered. So you need to look up, every time you see the word Gentile in the New Testament, you need to look that up in the Greek and understand what it is, okay? Uh, now, in the Apocrypha, it talks about the 20, I think, I think it was 27,000 people taken captive by the Assyrians 